talk about how I organize my fonts. I don't do it in the most professional way in the world, but I recently discovered I have over 10,000 fonts, and this way it works for me, so I'm going to give you these helpful pointers, so let's dive in. Hi, Emily. I'm a wedding invitation designer. My computer is stressing when I have Illustrator and <laughs> my face on the screen, so I apologize you don't get to see that today, but I do have tons of free resources here on invitation design, including a free seven-day invitation design crash course that is linked in the description of this video. Now, we're here in Illustrator, which is my preferred design platform, um, and I have basically gone through and just put my name in all the different fonts that I use regularly. When I get something new that I think I'm going to use regularly, I put it in here. There are services and apps that can do font management for you, like Suitcase Fusion, Font Explorer. These are mostly for, uh, most of the good ones are for Macs, and I have a PC. I also recently used Font Explorer, and it just was a little bit glitchy, and I didn't really like it, and it was kind of turning on and off fonts, as opposed to really organizing them in a way that felt usable to me. So what I've done is just gone through and numbered everything in different categories. So these are all the script fonts that I use a lot. There's about seven pages of that. And then these are the print fonts that I use. Mostly there's only three pages of that. Then I went through and kind of redesigned. These four are my top favorites. <laughs> And then these ones are separated into categories. So as you'll see, this first two pages is kind of modern, fun, whimsical scripts. This one is more classic scripts, more like copper plates, Spencerian style scripts. And then this one is like very, very modern, um, brushy handwriting kind of look, which has been really popular lately. So if a client does have a question, I usually don't provide a font book to them or a font list, but especially on Etsy, I'm more likely to do that because those clients expect something more transactional. Um, but if a client is just being a little bit more difficult or they say, I don't like the font you chose, but they haven't really given any feedback as to why they don't or what direction they want to go, I can just send them this. If I know they're in that like classic formal direction, I can send them this one and that's everything that fits there. And they can just say, oh, we love number eight. Go ahead. So really, um, easy. I love these are the pieces that I send out the most. And then also I refer to the print document a lot just because I don't remember the names of these as much. I'm a lot better at remembering the names of my script fonts for some reason, but these are all just a lot more similar. So I kind of forget the name sometimes and have to kind of click on it and learn remember what it is when I'm looking for something. And then the last piece that I think is really helpful is this font pairing sheet, which I can send out to clients. I also refer to it a lot um, on my own just to remember, oh, which uh, print font, like I said, I don't remember the names of those as easily, uh, goes with the script font that I'm using. And the big thing to pay attention with font pairings is that something about the two fonts is similar, even though one is script and one is print. So what that usually is is kind of the weights. And if you'll pay attention, like this is my font sapphire script, it's a lot heavier even on the thinner strokes than some of these others. So you'll want to use a font that is a little bit heavier. It's also a very round font. So this, I think this is Futura, works really well with it. Um, this one has kind of a medium weight for the thicker ones and then thin, and that's what you'll match in the script font. And it's a little bit more formal, so something with uh, serifs is really nice here. Um, you'll find like this is more of a monoline, so we have a monoline with it. This one has a big contrast between the thicks and the thins, and so we paired it with something that also has that same contrast, so they look like they go together and they look like they're cohesive, even though they're totally different types of fonts. So that's kind of what I look for in font pairing, and I created these ones so that I can know where to refer back to. That doesn't mean I don't ever stray from this and pair my font with something different. Uh, but these are just kind of starting points for me and things that I go back to regularly because they look nice together. So I'll link some of the apps that you can download that will do this for you. What it looks like is really putting your fonts into folders and turning those folders on and off to manage your fonts. I found that it wasn't, you know, it wasn't exactly how I like to do things, but that's not to say that it's right or wrong. This is just how I like to do it. Um, let me know if you have any questions and while you're here, I hope you'll watch more of our videos on wedding invitation design and join our seven day invitation design crash course.